Hi kids, welcome to Kid Connection, Heart of a Hero series. Last week we learned that heroes make wise choices, and tonight we're learning that heroes help others. We're learning that by hearing more about Joseph's story. You remember Joseph, he was just an ordinary guy, and his brothers sold him into slavery. And then while he was a slave in Potiphar's house, Potiphar's wife lied about him. She accused him of doing something he'd never done. And then he ended up being thrown in jail for a crime he never committed. That wasn't fair. That's what we call an injustice. An injustice is something that isn't fair and it hurts an innocent person. But even though Joseph suffered those injustices, God was with him the whole time. And he made Joseph a hero because he helped Joseph make wise choices. Well, while Joseph was in prison, he interpreted a couple of dreams. Remember, God gave him that special ability to interpret dreams. And there were two people there who had dreams, and Joseph told them exactly what the dreams meant. He was absolutely right. And two years after that, after one of those men had gone back to serve Pharaoh, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had a dream, and nobody there could interpret it. So this man who'd been in prison with Joseph said, oh, there's a Hebrew in the prison. He interpreted my dream, and he was absolutely right. So Pharaoh said, oh, well, let's get him in here. I need to know what this dream is about. So we're going to pick up the story there in Genesis 41. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. He'd shaved and changed his clothes, and he came before Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream, and no one can interpret it. But I've heard it said of you that you can interpret dreams. Joseph said, well, I can't do it, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. So Pharaoh told Joseph about his dreams. He said, I was in my dream, I was standing on the bank of the Nile River when out of the river there came up seven cows, fat and sleek, and they grazed among the reeds. After them, seven other cows came up, scrawny and ugly and lean. I'd never seen such ugly cows in all the land of Egypt. The lean, ugly cows ate up the seven fat cows, but no one could tell because they looked just as ugly as they had before. Then I woke up. In my next dream, I saw seven heads of grain, full and good, growing on a single stalk. After them, seven other heads sprouted, withered and thin, scorched by the east wind. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven good heads. I told this to my magicians and my wise men, but nobody could explain it to me. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he's about to do. The seven good cows and the seven good heads of grain, those are seven years. The seven ugly cows, the seven bad heads of grain, those are seven years too. The good cows and the good grain, those are seven good years where there's going to be lots of food growing and lots of abundance in Egypt. But the seven years that are represented by the ugly cows and the bad grain, those are seven years of famine where food won't grow and people won't have anything to eat. God has shown Pharaoh what he's about to do in giving you these dreams. And the reason the dream was given to you in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God, and God will do it soon. Then Joseph gave Pharaoh some advice. He said to him, you, know, you should find a wise person who can go throughout the land of Egypt and during these seven years of abundance, collect a portion of the food and store it up so that when the years of famine come, that stored food can be brought out and it can feed the people. So Pharaoh said, that's a really good idea, and I don't know anyone who's as wise as you. Clearly, the Spirit of God is with you, so I put you in charge, Joseph. You are in charge of the land of Egypt. So Joseph did exactly what he had recommended Pharaoh do, and he collected the food, and he stored it up, and he stored so much it couldn't even be measured. So when the famine came and all the world was without food, Egypt had food, and people from all over came to Egypt to buy food there. 
Well, among those who came to buy food in Egypt were Joseph's brothers. They came and they kneeled down before Joseph. They didn't know it was Joseph. Joseph recognized them, but they didn't recognize Joseph. Now, what do you suppose you would do if your brothers who'd thrown you in a pit and sold you to slave traders, how do you suppose you would feel about that? Do you think he thought they should be punished for this? All the trouble they brought me, they should be punished. But you know what? That's not how Joseph thought about it. Joseph was wise. And God gave him a heart that wanted to help others. And did you know that God's word tells us, don't take revenge, but leave room for God's wrath. It's written in the, it's mine to avenge, I will repair, repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, God says, if your enemy's hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. We find that in the New Testament in the book of Romans. And that is what Joseph decided to do. But he wanted to test his brothers a little bit while he had the opportunity. They didn't know who he was. And he wanted to see, are they still as uncaring and selfish as they used to be? Or do they care for each other better now? And do they care for their father better now? So he tested them a little bit. He said, who are you and where do you come from? And they said, well, we're a bunch of brothers. We come from the land of Canaan. We have another brother there that didn't come with us. And Joseph said, no, I think you're spies. And they said, no, we're not spies. We're brothers. We all have the same father. And we have one more brother who was too young to come. He's still at home. And Joseph said, unless you bring that other brother to me, you will never get grain to take home from Egypt. And he put him in jail for three days. After three days, he took them out of jail and said, one of you is going to stay here in jail, and the rest of you, you can go home, but don't come back here without your little brother, or I'll know that you are spies. Well, Joseph helped them anyhow, and he gave them grain to take back home. And when they got home and they told their father everything that happened, their father was very upset. He said, I've already lost Joseph, and now you want to take Benjamin back to Egypt with you? If I lose him, I will die. I'll be so sad. But there was nothing for it. If they were going to get more grain from Egypt, Benjamin had to go. And eventually, Israel, or Jacob, who's his other name, agreed to let Benjamin go with the brothers back to Egypt. So on the second visit to Egypt, Joseph saw his brothers, and he couldn't take it anymore. He saw Benjamin, he saw the rest of them, and he decided, I must make myself known to my brothers. He cried out to all the Egyptians who were around, have everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. Joseph wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers weren't able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. They were really worried that Joseph was going to take revenge. But remember, Joseph wasn't going to take revenge. He was making a wise choice and he was going to help them now that he could see that they cared for each other. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. I'm your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. Now don't be distressed and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years, there's been famine in the land and there's going to be five more years of famine. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve your lives and to keep you as a remnant on earth. So then it wasn't you who sent me here. But in fact, it was God. Wow. That is an amazing thing. Joseph trusts God so much that even though he suffered all the things he suffered and his brothers did all those bad things to him that led to more and more bad things, 
he didn't hold them responsible because he trusted that God did it all for a purpose, for the purpose that he could help his family and help others. Well, if we go to Genesis chapter 50, we'll learn from chapter 45 to 50 that Joseph said, go get dad, bring him here. Everybody come and live in Egypt with me where we're going to have food and you're going to be safe and I can take good care of you. So they went back, they picked up their dad, they picked up their kids, they picked up their animals, and they all came back to Egypt to live. And Jacob, their father, lived for 17 more years once he arrived in Egypt, and there Joseph took care of them. Then he died. He was an old man. He lived a long time, and it was time for him to go and be with the Lord. And after he died, the brothers were nervous again. Joseph's brothers thought, well, now that dad isn't here to protect us, will Joseph take revenge on us? And so they sent, a Joseph, they sent Joseph a message. They sent a message that says, Dad said before he died, this is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of God of your father. And when Joseph got the message, he cried. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Joseph is a real hero. God helped him become that hero. And God helped him make wise choices. And then Joseph helped others. You can be a hero too. If you trust God, he will help you to become a wise person who can help others. Ask God this week, what kinds of special gifts did you give me that I can use to help others? Ask God, may I have wisdom, please, in order to make good, wise choices? And ask God, how can I help others and be a hero for you? I hope that you have a great week looking for ways that you can be a wise and forgiving and helpful hero to those people around you. We'll see you next week, kids.